Well, Winston Miller and I'm the nephew of uh, Uncle Jack, as we call it, were known to him. And uh, that's about all I can say for that lot, too. Keep going. I'm Suzanne Blom. I'm the niece of um, who I knew as Jack Fry, but he, he obviously was John Fry and he was killed in the First Foot World War. We never were told anything about his death whatsoever, we, other than the fact that he died in World War I. I was aware that we'd lost, my grandmother had lost a brother in the war, and, um, but for me it was really exciting to come across all of his bits and pieces to find out that he was, you know, true to the story. He was only 19 and trooped off to war and was shot pretty much as soon as he arrived, which was really sad for the, and would have been really sad for the family for the at the family, time. Yeah. So he was a little boy when they moved from England to Australia, 1897. Lived on Ross Island for a number of years. That's where he left from was Ross Island. The way I've learnt the history of the family is that the great granddad didn't want John to go off to war. He, he felt he was too young and he wasn't ready. That's the story I've been told. Fry John George was educated at the State School South Townsville. Enlisted on the 17th of January 1915 and sailed for Egypt on the 16th of April 1915 and thence to Gallipoli. Served with his unit on the peninsula until wounded seriously on the 21st of August and died as a result of his wounds the next day and is buried on the peninsula. Oh, so he's buried at Gallipoli. It was quite strange reading some of the stuff, you know. It brings a tear to your eye because, you know, the mother signed the papers for him to go. But, but that's yeah. where the problem started, yeah. I think, was that the fact that your grandma signed yeah. the papers without da granddad's without knowledge. Grandfather. Yeah. yeah, and that became a bit of a, probably a reason why the family didn't speak about it, maybe. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of the Australian young yeah. fellows, they, yeah, they were just looking for adventure, you know, to, to go and see more of the world. And I think they were told it wasn't going to be a, a big war anyway, from what I can gather. Like, these are the dribs and jabs I've heard through the years, that it was only going to be just a short um, melee and we'll all be home next week sort of thing. But it'll be a nice trip around the world. Well, that didn't quite work out that for, for hundreds of thousands of people sort of thing. The Battle of Hill 60 was the last major assault of the Gallipoli campaign. It was launched on the 21st of August 1915. Two major attacks were made by Allied forces, the first on 21st of August and the second on the 27th of August. The first assault resulted in limited gains around the lower parts of the hill, but the Optimum defenders managed to hold the heights even after the attack was continued by a fresh Australian battalion on 22nd of August. Fourth Field Ambulance, Gallipoli, where John was taken after being wounded. He passed the next day, 22nd of August, 1915. So this is actually where he ended up, just in the bush. The attack on Hill 60 was the last offensive action undertaken around Anzac by the Allies prior to the evacuation in December 1915. So he was just really unlucky, wasn't he, really? This is from his mother, Edith Fry. Sir, with deep regret I have received news from you of my son, Mr John Fry, 1943's death. Could you tell me if he was buried on land or at sea? If you know, please tell me. I'm a British soldier's daughter and can bear it. Respectfully yours. So she was basically saying, please tell me whatever you know because I'm able to deal with this. Mm, yeah, um, yeah. I'm a British soldier's daughter and I can didn't bear know it. That, do you? It's interesting that it's taken the 100th year celebration for our family to start really talking about it. Yeah. I guess she probably felt it was the right thing to do if she was the daughter of a British soldier. For her, a son coming to her and asking her to join the services after Dad has said no and her overruling that would be just water for ducks back for her. Yeah. Because she, yeah, she would she believe was, that that's the child's position in the family would be to serve their country. <laughs>